Okay, let's start the webinar. Uh, good morning and welcome you all in this emerging technology webinar on Azure Operating Service Manager. Myself, Archie Desai, I'm a host for this webinar. Guys, if you have any question and queries, please put question on chat box. We will try to help you out. Main sponsor for this webinar is Synergetics. So Synergetics Learning is in India most distinguished learning company in IT technology. We are ready with our top class learning solution that can be made to fit every requirement in every sector across every industry around the globe. Our expensive greenfield solution include that is Persona-based onboarding solution, onboarding add-on solution, certification solution, certification add-on solution, reskilling solution, emerging technology training solution, certification hackathon solution, cloud adoption solution, latest technology training solution, sales pre-sales training solution, practice playbook solution, and architecting solution. Today webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. You just need, you just need to follow our uh, meetup app on our device and there you can follow our communities for upcoming update and information. Then you have to follow code of conduct. Please note that no one is allowed to take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. If you have any technical question related to the topic, you can use chat box to ask your question. Then today's speaker for this training is Om Prakash Pandey. He is a highly experienced Microsoft, Microsoft certified trainer and currently work with Synergetics as an AVP delivery. Agenda for this webinar, you will get an overview on the topic and more. Make sure guys you follow us on our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for upcoming update and uh, upcoming workshops. Thank you. Now, now I would like to hand over this mic our speaker. He will continue. Thank you, Archie. Hello Thank and good you, morning sir. everyone. Thank you very much for joining in. I hope my screen is visible to you all. Let's get started. Welcome to today's session on Azure Operator Service Manager. I'll not take much of your time today. The reason being, this is the first session in the entire series that we are going to start with. Now, before we deep dive into Azure Operator Service, let's understand what these set of technologies are. I'm pretty sure everyone here has heard about 5G networks, has heard about the new network cards that have been come in the market, various devices which are 5G enabled. So is this session about 5G networks? The answer is no. Because once it comes to Azure environment, Azure is not a telecommunication service provider himself. What Microsoft does is Microsoft is a service provider. From perspective of cloud based deployments, making sure that these resources are aligned and using storage, compute and networking services on the Azure environment. Before we deep dive into Azure Service Man Operator Service Manager, let me quickly take you all through a set of key resources within telecommunication set of services given by Microsoft. I would need all of you all to take some time, go to the link which I have shared, and let's look at the options available here within these suite of services. So you'll see this suite of services. This is actually a solution as part of a lot of other solutions available within Microsoft. These are set of solutions or suite of products that we have, which is mapped towards telecommunications. For understanding and making simpler for end users, 
what Microsoft has done is they have shared a set of videos which can bring the right perspective of what these suit of products are. And when I said this is the first session in the complete transformation journey. My name is Om Prakash Pandey and as I go ahead, I'll be delivering series of sessions on this on each of the services that we have. So if you look at today's scenario, we are talking about one of these products, which is Azure Operator Service Manager. But there are other connected solutions like Azure Operator Nexus, Azure Operator Insights, Azure Operator Call Protection, Azure Programmable Connectivity. Some of the fundamental services over here, which this suit is based on, is Azure Private 5G Core. For our other components, we have Azure Operator 5G Core. Along with this, for existing on-premises environment, we have Azure Communications Gateway. For on-premises connectivity again, we have Azure Stack HCI, which is a specialized Azure infrastructure within on-premises environment. For IoT connectivity, we have Azure IoT operations, Azure Sphere, right, which is more device-based implementations for these products. So this is the complete set of products that we have. And using combination of all these products, using combination of all these services, Microsoft gives a complete portfolio for operators. Since many of them would be new to this environment. So first thing what we'll do is we'll go through some of these videos over here. From transformation point of view, how one can go ahead and accelerate the innovation and growth with these 5G networks. So let me play the first video over here. At Microsoft, our aim is to be the most trusted co-innovation partner through every stage of the digital evolution. Committed to working with communications service providers, CSPs, enterprises, developers, and ISVs. One thing which I have not mentioned right now is you have services for connecting with some of these devices, some of the optical fibers, satellite channels, Right, even that communications are op available, but that is not mentioned as part of the current services over here. Because that is again in the backend infrastructure. Microsoft helps us to connect to that infrastructure, but the, it does not play a vital role in uh, hosting or working with the orbital satellites. The like on the future of a ubiquitous cloud that unlocks the true potential of modern connected apps. Azure for Operators is empowering operators to accelerate their network transformation with our trusted carrier. As we go ahead, we'll go into more details of this particular section, Azure for Operators. I'll talk about this in more details. Your great platform and helping them unlock new opportunities with automation and AI. Enabling enterprises with ubiquitous computing that spans from cloud to edge. Helping developers and ISVs build more innovative network aware applications. Azure for Operators is empowering operators, enterprises, and developers across a range of industries to define the future of the cloud powered by a modern network infrastructure that enables a new application and connectivity paradigm, what we call modern connected apps that puts compute even closer to the problems we need to solve. We are excited to share these product announcements. Azure Operator Nexus is built from the ground up to run mobile network workloads with the resiliency, security, observability, and performance that operators need. 
by eliminating the need for operators to construct and maintain private cloud infrastructures. Azure Operator Nexus dramatically simplifies the provisioning of the new network services through orchestrating and optimizing the deployment of network functions on the enterprise premises, the operator far edge, near edge, or public cloud. The result is... So you realize at number of times it is mentioning about the edge environment, right? So as far as edge, HPC, these are your on-premises compute, which is closer to the current devices, closer to the current end user environment. So when you're talking about operator Nexus, this is Nexus primarily as a, as a word, it means networking or binding between both these environments. Binding between your on-premises environments, on-premises resources, IoT devices, and how they can leverage on the services and features of cloud is highly automated, self-optimizing software defined networks that heal, defend, and provision themselves. And with a platform built on Microsoft's Zero Trust principles, protection is assured for these applications, networks, and workloads. Managing real-world networks is an arduous task. Azure Operator Service Manager enables you to deploy and upgrade multi-vendor, multi-site services for more reliable and more scalable operations. And it's all based on the same technology we use for managing Azure and tailored to your needs. As network complexity grows, it's increasingly difficult to discover, diagnose, and remediate problems. Azure Operator Insights with Operator Nexus or your existing infrastructure uses our... You all would realize as the video moves ahead, it is talking about all possible components that we have, right? So that's why I said we may be looking at one member right now, which is operator service manager, but there are a lot of other components that you will see. And as I go ahead session by session, I will be taking you all through with each of those options, right? So which part of the problem is being solved by each component, which is being part of this entire solution. Our extensive experience and investment in AI to automate your lifecycle management from application to infrastructure. Azure Communications Gateway streamlines the integration of fixed and mobile networks to Microsoft Teams Phone as part of the Operator Connect program and Teams Phone Mobile, answering the increasing need from businesses and customers to enhance collaboration and productivity. As an operator, productization of new business services can be a lengthy and disruptive process for your network, your operations, and your budgets. Azure Communications Gateway directly addresses the operator imperative to rapidly launch new services by providing a managed service that simplifies network and IT system integration, allowing you to maintain existing business process and reduce project lead times from months or years down to... This is one of the best things that you all would be able to understand at a single section where you see all the advantages that we have with this operator insights, object, uh, Azure operator services that we have for telecommunication, for internal and also for external. Two weeks. Azure Operator Voicemail is a significant milestone for operators looking to transform their supportive legacy voice services while realizing cost savings. Azure Operator Voicemail delivers two main benefits, substantial TCO reduction and operational simplicity. This service enables operators to migrate their voicemail service. Now, some of these services you all would see is, um, you all might think it is a, uh, duplication of what we already have within your team's environment. OK, so please be careful. It's not replacing teams right now. It is giving a better option, right? So you'll have. SaaS solution or SaaS options within teams, but on a larger scale for an entire enterprise, if you have to build, then we can use this particular voice services here within the corporate to Azure and to take advantage of a highly reliable, fully managed cloud service. Azure Operator Voicemail reduces the operational support burden and severs the hardware purchase lifecycle. It is the last voicemail system you ever need to deploy. To further monetize an operator's 5G and edge investments, our Azure... This is where I began my discussion. That is taking 
advantages of 5G resources, 5G networks today. So some of the deployments today, and this is not about just the phone that we have. It's more about the entire background that we have about 5G networks. So how do we leverage on that? Public and private mech solutions bring Microsoft's secure cloud computing platform to the edge of operator and enterprise networks closer to devices and users. Integrated with industry applications, ready for independent software development, and complete with a full range of Azure's edge optimized services. The Azure for Operators mech solutions deliver the data rich, low latency solutions that customers demand. For enterprise environments, our Azure Private Mech solution is built with components from Microsoft and our broad ecosystem of technology partners, enabling operators and systems integrators to quickly deploy with Azure Private 5G Core and manage private wireless networks from the Azure Cloud. And Azure Public Mech integrates Azure Compute and Services with the mobile operator's 5G connectivity empowering enterprises and developers to deliver innovative low latency applications at the network edge for cross-industry use cases. We strive to be your trusted co-innovation partner through every stage of the digital evolution, committed to working with operators, enterprises, and developers. Accelerate your innovation and growth, all with a technology partner you can trust. Microsoft Azure for Operators. Let's empower your future. So I hope this makes some sense for you all from a starting point of view and setting the context. The reason being we have been working with various resources within Azure from containers point of view, virtual machines point of view, right? Using uh, storage services, analytics services, right? So these new set of services, how do they fit in or what are the core purpose of that? Right? That's why I wanted to start with the first member to understand what is the significance of this or, and where does one start over here? So if you see the way how, how I have broken up this session, right? the two hour session that we have for us today, like I said, this is just the starting piece of the entire solution suit. So first thing which I want to talk about is the network operator challenges. Though in the video, it did not mention that in the required depth, right? Second thing which I'm going to talk about is how does Azure solve those network operator challenges? And then getting into the actual service, what is Azure Operator Service Manager? And finally, Azure uh, in terms of implementation steps, what are required? What are the implementation options that we have within Operator Service Manager? So this will be my focus. And as I go ahead, I will share some of the details. My apologies, guys. This uh, service is in preview right now. Correct. So and what Microsoft has been doing is they have been enhancing the details, enhancing the product documentation, all the dependent dependencies and the options available here. So I may not be able to show you the complete end to end demo for these resources because the underlying infrastructure required for that is pretty uh, tedious, right? And I, and I don't have all of it right now. But my attempt over here would be to make sure I assist all of you all to understand these processes, understand the details you have. So within your organization or with if you'll have a um, telecommunications support with Mac and uh, other uh, deploy required de backend deployments like Edge, IoT resources, you can definitely go ahead and try it out, right? So what I want to do as an outcome of this session would be a kickstart on this particular solution area. Let's go ahead with the first module of this learning path. So here, once it comes to your network operators, so you the moment I say this name, <laughs> it might come to your mind saying, Om Prakash, I have only one network service provider, uh, which is our networking team within the organization. That's not what we're talking about. When we say network operators over here, we are talking about the mobile service providers that we have or 
internet service providers that we have, which could be Reliance Geo, which could be Tata, Airtel, which could be um, Vodafone, right? Right. So there are number of such service providers that we have, and even within that service provider, even within within those range of service providers, here what I'm talking about is more precisely in terms of 5G networks. Everybody, everybody is trying their best to make sure they can quickly ramp up their services and provide a large scale 5G support for their services. So those are the kind of vendors, those are the kind of partners that, that we are talking about. Now one would say, Om Prakash, you said five, six vendor names right now. As an organization, we will prefer going for any one of them. Right? The answer is it may not be the reason being at, a, at any given point in time when we're looking at BCDR kind of scenarios, having a backup kind of support over here or setting up express route, right? In each of these cases, or uh, not to mention, forget that point, we, we may have certain specific kind of workloads that we're looking at or um, specific kind of bandwidth that we are looking at. OK, now in these scenarios, just working with or just tied up with one particular vendor may not solve our problem. Right, so we may have to work with multiple vendors, multiple network service operators, network service providers at any given point in time. OK, that's one. Apart from that, what are the other? Challenges that one would encounter when we are working with different set of network operators. So first thing that you'll see is there's an exponential growth. Because everybody and uh, even. Our uh, prime minister of our nation, he also has. Showcased or uh, came up with various live videos on news channels and everywhere you all must have seen how 5G can. Change the entire scenario of how people are going to consume internet, internet based services, right? So keeping that kind of perspective in mind, keeping that kind of promotion, and I'm not saying just about our uh, country, even India, even across the globe, you will have seen large scale adoption of 5G. So here, if you see the first member, there are more than 5 billion cell phone users and 2.5 exabytes of data being shared, being transferred on day to day basis. 40 plus billion devices. Are supposed to be added up by 2025. So with increase in terms of number of devices with increase in terms of uh, data bandwidth being shared, right? What is having uh, what is the problem over here is patience. People want that data much faster with zero or uh, with zero or no buffering at all. Right? I whenever I want any kind of content, it should be available to me immediately. Right? So if you look at the uh, kind of investments being made from 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G and then getting into 5G, right? So today what people are looking for is getting into new areas of business in terms of streaming audio, streaming video, streaming text information, right? People are looking at integration with lot of IoT devices. So earlier we were only talking about laptops, desktops, mobile phones, tabs. Now we are talking about large scale devices over here. Right and continuous tracking of uh, uh, large infrastructure, large, large uh, industrial manufacturing setups that one we had, right? Talk, uh, talking about critical goods being trans uh, transported or transferred from one place to the second place, right? Con continuous tracking of these devices, continuous tracking of the appliances which are being transferred, right? So all these things are part of the IoT based deployments. Along with this, people are also looking at autonomous vehicles. Which can. Make sure that. People are not uh, not using 
or not driving themselves, but they can completely rely on IoT devices. They can completely uh, rely on various signals being generated by a set of devices and the vehicle can function on its own. Third important member that you'll see is dynamic economics. Where it is possible to automate anything and everything. Even machines are now being trained to think like humans, take quick decisions, provide appropriate generate set of information based on the prompts or based on the values being mentioned. It can automatically generate set of resources. So while you we were going through the video at number of time it mentioned about use of artificial intelligence. Use of artificial resources, uh, artificial intelligence and cognitive based services. Use of large language models behind the scene, which will help us. Create these resources dynamically. The next important resource that you'll see is cost saving. Now one would say this on premises infrastructure, 5G resources, all these things can be done locally as well. The answer is yes, but the amount of cost incurred. To create, manage and when I'm, like I mentioned earlier, if you're looking at BCDR kind of solution. If something fails, there is some problem, then how do you handle that? Right. Apart from that, decreasing a carbon footprint. So these are set of key areas or I would say the key challenge areas that we have for. Network operators. I already mentioned about the relevance and significance of 5G, but along with that advantages, you also have set of challenges that needs to be addressed over here. So first is with increasing number of users with increase in terms of expectations, lot of medicinal use, lot of legal issues can be resolved online. Right, transferring of large amount of streaming information. How do I do that? So how one can increase the service velocity over here? So once you're looking at. Speed with which we can adopt new services, allow new users to. Uh, enroll themselves, start leveraging on the services. At the same time, it should be reliable as well. And uh, I, I hope you understand what I'm trying to say initially and you must have come across these kind of scenarios in past as well. So initially when there were less number of users, the amount of bandwidth amount of speed with that we were getting was very, very fast. But suddenly with increase in terms of number of resources uh, in terms of number of people, right? Number of. Subscribers, the service quality keeps depleting. Right? So what people are asking for is. Even if we go ahead with uh, 5G or even if we go ahead with other high end services. Will there be a problem going ahead? Because we have we have seen that kind of uh, things happening in past. So initially everything works smooth when we hop on to the new bandwagon when we uh, start using these services initially, but as we proceed further, right? The performance goes down. So is it reliable? Because based on that I am committing to my end users. Right? I'm committing to my end users a specific set of bandwidth. And if that bandwidth goes down, my customer is going to scream and shout at me. They might start looking at other operators, right? And they will discontinue the services which I am giving right now. So how do you ensure reliability with these 5G services? Third important point is how I can see a path to cloud savings. How I can simplify or make it easier for the people to make sure they are connected to cloud because as the scale increases, giving the same kind of reliability, simpler management of these resources. How do I do that? Right? So what will be a mechanism of doing that? So before we proceed ahead. Let me take 
one more scenario over here. That is modernizing our network. The connectivity demands of enterprises and consumers are rapidly evolving, creating increased urgency for operators to keep up with this rapid pace of digital transformation. 5G. Now, some part of this discussion I would have already mentioned. If I have missed certain points, you all will be able to see it over here. Promises to revolutionize the consumer and enterprise wireless market. But developing a business model that successfully monetizes this technology requires the adoption of deployment methodologies that efficiently delivers architectures capable of supporting new service offerings and emerging applications. Edge computing is an essential element of these new infrastructures. Azure Private Mac is the first public cloud solution specifically designed to host highly distributed and decoupled 5G network functions, along with the software required to add commercial value. This includes rapidly applying modern artificial intelligence to large amounts of sensor-driven data using complex machine learning algorithms requiring... So you will be able to see where these 5G resources are being used. So we may be looking at just one aspect of it, which is SIM management. People are using SIM cards which are 5G, but that, that's not the only thing. There are a lot of other services also where 5G networks or the respective bandwidth which is being given makes sense. And there is a complete set of resources that we have. Microsoft Azure private Mac, right? Within the environment, transportations, various domains which are being created, IoT edge resources, networking, EMS. Significant processing power. While implementing and maintaining 5G architectures is complex, Microsoft achieves the necessary operational efficiencies and flexibility by employing an integrated suite of management and automation tools. These extend beyond Azure, enabling multi-cloud and hybrid cloud approaches. So guys, once it comes to Azure Arc, Azure HPC, right? Uh, Azure Sphere, all these are on-premises resources that we have. On-premises implementations that we can, that one can create and that can uh, help you leverage the edge, edge, cup, edge in sense, the local environment, the local uh, compute, local storage, we can use that. But from a management point of view, the management will be taken care by Azure services at the top to implementations that span heterogeneous edge and core compute services. Deploy and optimize next-gen networks. Start your journey today with Azure for Operators. So from a network point of view, you all would have realized a lot of investment which has been made locally, right? We are not leaving that as it is. We are trying to leverage on the existing investments and how make, how one can make best out of those members, right? So this was the first element in terms of challenges. What are the problems people are facing? Let's go ahead. Let's look at the solution areas over here. How does Azure Microsoft Azure provides their solution to the network operators? So this this is what I what I mentioned earlier. So I will discuss about I said I will be discussing about this in more details. So first section that you'll see that is acceleration of network, right? Transforming the career grade trusted platform. Now for this. There are four services in the back end. I'm sure everybody is able to see this. There are four services in the back end. One is Azure Operator Nexus. Complete network of all the operators where you can onboard these operators. You can associate these operators. You can add the devices map to these operators. So this is our first service, which is Azure Operator Nexus in the entire scenario. 
The second member over here that you'll see is Azure Communications Gateway. For end user communication for teams based communication. The next member here is Azure Communications Gateway. And this Communications Gateway. I'm sure everybody would have understood the name. So whenever we talk about the gateway, these gateway services are connected to our on premises environment, right? It it uh, um, helps you work with Arc devices. It helps you work with the edge devices that we have. Look and HPC, which is available locally. The last over here is Azure Operator Voicemail, which we already mentioned in the videos over here. So once it comes to your Teams environment, once it comes to your Stream environment, right? Storing the voicemail or voice details that we had. Earlier, some of these things was only part of your exchange environment. Today, what is happening is it is part of your voicemail solution as well. Second resource that you'll see here is unlocking opportunities with Azure automation and AI. And if you see guys this section, how how do we uh, automate things, right? Unless we are having a telemetry, unless we have observability of the underlying resources, how much is the consumption of a specific resource? Is it suddenly increased? It has gone down or whatever is the current response that we have. So keeping these kind of perspective in mind, first you have to capture that information. First you have to monitor that resources behind the scene. So this is the place where we have both these services playing an important role. One is our Azure Operator Insights and second is Azure Operator Service Manager. So in our today's discussion. Oops. In our today's discussion. We are actually looking at this particular section. OK, though I'm not discussing Azure Operator Insights today, I'm discussing about Azure Operator Service Manager. So this is more in terms of how do you automate this entire resources, automate the entire components over here. Capture the uh, telemetry, capture the insights that we have. And using artificial intelligence, how do you come to know what is going behind the scene? As we go ahead, I want to though I have not prepared for it as of now, but what I want to do is I want to uh, work with my IoT team, which we have at Synergetics, because if you all know about Synergetics, Archie could not explain it in more details because she would, didn't want it to eat up the time that we have for today's session. But if you all uh, see Synergetics as an organization here, what we have is we have multiple practices within our organization, right? And each practice is focusing on bunch of technologies, bunch of emerging areas that we have. And one of these areas, so right now myself, uh, my name is Om Prakash Pandey and I am the practice head of infrastructure and collaboration. OK. So once it comes to Azure Arc, once it comes to hybrid environment, once it comes to um, edge based computing, I know quite a few details over there. We also have a separate team which specializes in terms of IoT solutions. Right? So what I'm going to do is as I go ahead, I will be working with them to check for how one can associate the IoT devices. Right? And capture that or associate them with our operator insights using 5G environment. So if I have set of devices, if I have set of resources, how do we capture uh, how do you write program with that right and using that programmable connectivity how do you capture those details within azure operator insights and handle that manage that by using operator service manager right so this is your development aspects yes this will require programming knowledge in terms of python in terms of dotnet right because these are two primary languages that microsoft is focusing on right now especially in terms of newer services.
last but not the least if you see the foundational member like i mentioned earlier so you have your public mac expansion as your private mac expansion that is your mobile extensibility services that we have over here then your private 5g core your edge network fabric your isb resources right so these will be the primary members that we'll have over here primary resources that we have over here as part of the foundation so once you have this underlying infrastructure being set up underlying resources being set up then we can go and manage it by using operator insights and operator service manager right so this single slide you'll see talks about all the services within the current suit if you look at the solution over here there are multiple members over here the first member here is your azure environment the azure cloud you have other existing operator clouds that we have which you want to integrate here we have our azure operator nexus where all these members are being onboarded right so if you see the carriers over here we have our mobile core we have our enterprise mecs these will be the base infrastructure now like i was mentioning about the development aspects over here the development aspects will involve the the ci cd tooling continuous integration continuous deployment so if there are any new things that are updated there are new changes being done on the underlying system how do you leverage on those members right that's where you have your operator insights that's where you have your operator service manager which can help you automate creation of new resources uh, making the environment elastic in nature right we have our partner resource service orchestrator so if you have other uh, third party op operator services being enabled we are using their tools as well right so azure operator service manager can work together with the existing tools so you don't have to just throw away the existing tools that we have we can integrate that within our operator service manager now what this will help us do is you you will have unification of service orchestration everything at one place reliable deployment of software and we can quickly repeat this process because here what one would want to do is everybody would want to build custom applications by using these 5g resources right so that is what being given by azure operator service manager so if you see how this works so you have your ci cd pipelines so as part of your as part of our uh, azure devops as a solution you can specify your CD, ci cd pipelines you can specify what are the services which are running over here and you can have your network fundamentals or network foundational resources which is mapped to various nf nfvds or nf resources that we have in the back end right so whenever we are configuring a kind of network over here con configuring set of service operators these are referred as nf now this is more in terms of the actual implementations what will be the roles that people would play within this environment if we see the members over here we have options we have roles in terms of operator we have roles in terms of publisher or a designer so once it comes to our publisher or a designer role they will be creating set of resources which is using various components from perspective of 
Docker. You'll see this icon over here, Helm charts, uh, various images that one would want to create. Right, this is one available role over here, which is publisher or a designer of that services or the application that, we just, that one, one is using. Second member over here is operators in terms of the infrastructure assistance teams. So here what one can do is we can create respective sites over here. We can create site network service, specify various configuration details with them and we will be able to leverage that. In the back end, what we need to do is we, we will have a lot of YAML files over here. Lot of JSON files over here where we will go and specify the configuration details where we will go and specify the network service designs that one would want to create. Just give me a moment. Let's go to the fourth member over here that is accelerate innovation and growth because we are talking about development over here. So one of the key aspects of development would be your acceleration of innovation. Ensure only authorized use of access to the rights database. Right, so you can check for these details over here. I hope I think I hope I have already clarified these areas telecommunication portfolio. Where we have multi access edge, which is also called as MEC. Multi access edge compute. Operator Nexus, Operator Insights, and the significance of Operator Service Manager. So anyone, any questions before I proceed ahead? From a telecommunications point of view, set of services that we have used Just one more thing which I did not mention about. Media mixed reality. Yeah, this one. So they yet don't have a separate connection or a separate area over here for these services. They have yet put it in the networking section. I would recommend, or y'all might see going in future, there will be a separate services for telecommunic separate uh, category for telecommunications. So you'll see operator service manager. Azure Communications Gateway, 5G Core. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Azure Orbital Ground Station. So in the diagram, you all must have seen the uh, satellites or lot of receiver signals being shown number of times. All of them can be mapped to your Azure Orbital Ground Station. So Microsoft also gives us a service, right? Through which we can connect to the the satellites that we have, satellite ground stations that we have, capture information from there, leverage and optimize those resources as well. So this is also working in the background, but it's not shown as part of any of the diagrams or discussions. Let me share the link with you all. 
So whenever you all get time, you all can go through these resources as well. Which is Azure Orbital Ground Station. I can see one question here. How can we automate in the distributed service provided by the environment? So uh, they from an operation automation point of view, we have standard options available within Microsoft. We can make use of Azure functions. We can make use of Azure Automate as a resource. Azure automation accounts one can use, right? So those those options will be the same. The only thing that will change here will be respect, respective SDK, respective commands for it, whether it is CLI commands or partial commands. Perfect. Anyone else? Any other questions? You all can mention the chat window. So till now we looked at various set of options that we have and the core purpose of the solution, right? Let's go to the next resource here. And let's go to details of Azure Operator Service Manager. What are the options available here? What will be the steps involved? So first step which I did is I went into the telecom section, telecom overview of the entire details. Second set of information in terms of now we are getting specific to this service, which is Azure Operator Service Manager. I'm also sharing the relevant links on the chat window so you all can go through it. So some of these aspects we may have mentioned. Operator service manager, the core purpose is transforming the entire operator service management experience. So whenever we have multiple people connecting, whenever we have multiple operators to be onboarded and working with those resources, right? How, how one can do that? Simplify the modeling with Azure native Azure uh, native Azure abstraction error free operations and this is what I was mentioning about when we say native Azure abstractions which means for automation you need not have other set of services you still can go ahead leverage on the ARM templates that you have use Azure automation services right same set of members abstract the modeling of multi vendor services service placement across geographical distribution. Now this is a very, very important aspect. So one common question that people have is. When I use cloud as a resource, right? So you are recommending to go for cloud based services, cloud based resources. What advantage will I get? So one major advantage that we mentioned earlier was about the cost saving. That's that's one important aspect. Second is placement across geographical locations. If we have to do it manually, if we have to uh, invest the hard earned money from from the organization, that will be a very, very difficult aspect. Right? And even after having physical deployments at multiple locations, managing them across the uh, across the geographies, having real time data of it, having uh, appropriate automations for that. Now that becomes a big challenge. So once it comes to your Azure environment, once it comes to Microsoft given services on these 5G environments, what it helps us do is. Apart from placement across geographical areas, right? We can have these services being monitored 24 by 7, 365, getting real time data, having uh, manual solutions or automated solutions depending upon whatever is your need. We can manage these things. 
apart from this, when we began the first video, it very categorically mentioned about security. Right. So giving enough amount of security to people who would want to leverage and use these services. Have respective edge agents being running on the underlying systems on the arc environment sphere environment. Right and leveraging on those environments here. Right that these are the four primary members I would say for what will what is an advantage that one would get using operator service manager. Right. So this is more in terms of a monitoring service that we have across different geographies. On premises and also on multi cloud scenarios. Now one thing which I have been mentioning. In most of my sessions that is Azure is now moving into a multi cloud service provider and you all would see as as the names have been modified. So instead of using terms like Azure Sentinel, the name is Microsoft Sentinel. Instead of using names like Azure Purview or Office 365 compliance, the name is now Microsoft Purview. Right. Instead of using. Uh, Azure Defender or Azure Security, it's now called as Microsoft. Cloud Defender for cloud. Uh, uh, Microsoft Defender for cloud, right? So different names that you all will see. It's more and even the uh, connectors that you'll see they, you have multiple cloud connectors which are available. So the core purpose of that is having unification of the service orchestration. So what is the task set of tasks or activities that one would want to perform? All these things should be consolidated unified at one place. Right, so as an administrator, my job, my role becomes much more simpler. So I don't have to jump around 20 different windows or jump around 200 different places. Just one place to configure one place to manage and monitor these resources. So once it is being onboarded successfully, once the device or the resource is being onboarded successfully, I will be able to see them over here. Right, so any kind of northbound southbound operation uh, integration options, all these things will be managed as at one place. Right, so that's the advantage that I would get. Another important question that we mentioned earlier was reliability. Right, so using fleet wide software rollouts, safe deployment practices, right? Using number of workflow actions, gates, delays, right? So all these things are managed from a single place. And any kind of challenges or unexpected results we can capture it from one place. Now once it comes to automation, right? Another important aspect of automation would be repeatability. We can repeat various configuration, repeat various network functions that one would want to create over here. Last but not the least is our usage of AI. Use analytics for intelligent orchestration. So getting all these reports at a single place. So if you have to uh, map certain KPIs, network performance, subscriber data records, real time error logging, right? This will be core advantages that we have with our operator service manager, right? So detect quick detection of if there is, see, giving the services is one aspect, but there could be people, there could be systems which are or applications which are misusing it. So how do we quickly track that? How do we quickly stop that kind of access, right? Get back the control of those resources. This is the core purpose of operator service manager. So before we proceed ahead, let's take a quick break over here. 10 minutes, grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's assemble back and let's go into more details from an implementation point of view. Right, so what are the steps required for implementation and how one can go ahead and start working with operator service manager? OK.
grab a cup of tea or coffee. Let's assemble back in 10 minutes.
Welcome back, everyone. Let's proceed ahead. So before the break, we looked at some of the key aspects from perspective of operator service manager. In context of the complete telecommunications suit of services given by Microsoft. And like I said, this is just tip of the iceberg and what we are looking at in these in this session specifically is operator insights, operator service manager, which is more from a monitoring point of view, monitoring of this entire tool set that we have. Now, what one needs to do is we need to create these members, we need to create these resources and then apply this monitoring services. Like if you look at your virtual machines or if you look at your past services, so before applying app insights or before applying VM insights, we have to create those resources. So similarly, we need to create these underlying resources and on top of that, we need to associate the operator service manager. Now, once it comes to this operator service manager, the core advantages like I mentioned earlier, just few more points to discuss over here is. It provides native abstraction for modeling, right? And making sure we have a hybrid environment being successfully set up between our on premises environment, between our edge resources that we have and our Azure components. Now these network services that we're talking about, this will be represented as your network graph. So where we'll have multiple network functions. Right, so when you say NFs, if you remember the uh, previous details, right? These are your network functions that we are creating and all these network functions are associated with our operator service manager. Right. Now another uh, aspect that one can use over here to correlate with these members, these network function could also be seen as microservices, right? Breaking up of the entire uh, application components into smaller components, smaller sub services, right? So one can see these network functions as small set of services, network services that can be coordinated, that can be worked together, right? By using different set of policies. So depending upon what kind of implementations we are looking at, right? What are the operational needs that we have for every telecom uh, given by every telecom member, right? Based on that, we can utilize these resources. We can coordinate between these members. Now, for creating these network functions, there are different options for hosting it. So one option would be by using our containers. Second option over here would be by using your virtual machines. So from an implementation standpoint, these are two primary ways through which one can create these create or I would say host these network functions that we have. For creating these network functions, we have a relevant set of details from perspective of. Creating appropriate configuration schemas, right? We can go and make certain changes or modifications to our underlying environment. For per site variation, right? And some of these schemas are being predefined, pre provided to us. And you'll be like I, as I go ahead, I will show you some of the details of the same in terms of how these templates can be leveraged. I already discussed about unification of orchestration, usage of analytics. I'll not go to it once again. Okay. So in terms of product features that you'll see, you have your backend Azure Operator Nexus platform where all these service providers would be associated. We have appropriate service catalog over here. Now I'll uh, deliver another session on the same where I will be showcasing some of the details in terms of how one can create Azure Operator Nexus 
what are the features available here? Second important member that we earlier spoke about was unified service orchestration, right? This is what I was mentioning about. So from a virtual machine creation or container creation, we can leverage upon Azure Resource Manager, ARM templates. Just give me a second before I proceed ahead. This is a very good video in terms of monetizing the investments or whatever benefits that we have from this environment. Let's take a look at that. Azure for Operators extends network operators new opportunities for supporting core infrastructure and innovative services that combine the power of the cloud and the flexibility of edge computing. As a regulated industry supporting a broad customer base with a range of solutions, operators are committed to providing customers with a consistent and reliable experience with product life cycles that span decades. Services must continue to be maintained long after they leave mainstream adoption and revenue contributions slowly erode. Compounding potential declines, the legacy service delivery platforms become increasingly expensive to maintain and can reach end of life while user demand is still high and no alternative exists. As a global hyperscale public cloud with the most local points of presence, Microsoft Azure creates new opportunities for operators wanting to breathe fresh life into communications offerings. Combined with Azure Edge Compute's cost effectiveness, the move towards highly automated software-based network functions using cloud-native development methodologies enables operators to achieve leading edge profitability and innovation from trailing edge services. Maximize existing investments while minimizing OpEx. Start your journey today with Azure for Operators. Right, so this is what I was talking from a locations point of view and leveraging on the existing resources that we have. So when you're talking about ARC environment, when you're talking about edge devices, IoT devices, these devices are locally available and management and monitoring of these things would be done by members like Azure Operator Service Manager on the cloud environment. Right, so we can have a reliable deployment of telco grade network function softwares using the network functions. We can have secured software distribution supply chain. Because whenever we are talking about custom application development, we were talking about CI CD pipelines earlier, right? So all these pipelines will require secured software distribution. And using these members, we'll be able to provide a secured and reliable environment for our end users. Along with this, we also mentioned about the consistent service updates. Where we are changing these software, changing these resources. This is the video which I showed you all right now. Acceleration of service velocity. How one can optimize the capital expenses that we have. And this can be up to 40% reduction of capital expenses. So if you already have resources available within the on-prem environment, how one can leverage on that and how one can leverage on resources within the cloud environment. This link has been removed now. Okay, not a problem. This link is already available with me. This is the same link. So guys, this is a complete documentation that we have from operator service management point of view. 
and in our today's session i have already been discussing about lot of features available here you all can see some of the details being mentioned as far as roles and interfaces are concerned there are three primary roles that we have one is the function publisher somebody who's creating these resources we have our service designer and finally the service operator so as far as the developer experience is concerned developer experience is required for creating or writing those functions right if you have pre existing images depending upon if you are going for a container or virtual machine based applications so based on that you need need a right function publisher we need to have service designer over here so when it comes to complete communication between the resources how that is going to happen and finally people who are administering this environment that is your network service operators if you see the role of each of these individuals this is how it happens so you have your network function publisher who will create appropriate docker images specify json and uh, specify yaml based configuration specify appropriate details of uh, details and resources for these images now once this is being done using azure operator service manager this network function nfd will be associated with your nfd store okay and through the service designer right here what we are going to do is we are using this network service design to collaborate and work with all these members together now how to create these nfds uh, network function design network service design we'll take a look at that right now once this is being done we can map this to a service operator right where the configuration details where the network service design is being mentioned service design associates with function design and this service design associates also with your configuration resources now once this is being done you see the key role being played in all these scenarios is your operator service manager so i'm not sure how many of you have worked with kubernetes this is very similar to how your kubernetes environment plays a vital role across creation of resources publishing of resources execution of that members right same thing holds true for operator service manager let's go to the quick start section so here if you all see there are two primary ways of creating your network function so first is using the containerized network function and second is using the virtualized network function let's go to the first member here that is containerized network functions so step 1 what one is to do over here is initialize or install set of prerequisites for it so step number 1 you'll see is register your services as your operator service manager register these services within our subscription so in my case what i have done is i have gone to my subscription i have gone to the resource providers can you see this microsoft operator voice mail iot operations orchestrator iot operations mq operational insights operations management i have already registered these two services right there are other services as well which are not registered as of now 
So step number one would be registering these components over here within our subscription. So if you see the step number one, this is what one is to do. Second member that one is to do is for uh, creating this machine or for creating the container, we need to make use of Azure CLI. So if you see these steps here, so one way is going to your subscription, uh, going to the portal, going to the subscription, and that's one way of doing it. Second way of doing it will be AZ extension add. So you can use this. You, you, we can perform these uh, subscription changes by using our Cloud Shell or Bash. Right, this will be one option. Second option is, like I showed you all, you all can go to the portal, go to the subscription section, and do it from there. Now, since these services are in preview, so it will show you a warning message over here. Don't worry on that. Allow hyphen preview true. So this is how one should write this command. Allow hyphen preview as true. Add the required extension. In my case, it's already being installed. Along with this, we need other two members. Now, especially when we are going for containers, we will require a hybrid network for on-premises connectivity. Association with container registry, ACR. So once we have these resources being configured. Now this is if you go to the next step now, this will become a problem problem in sense. Creating these things within the cloud shell, I would not recommend. Instead, what one should do is one should go ahead, create a virtual machine here. And perform all the further steps. Inside the virtual machine. Perform all the next set of steps by using the virtual machine. So you can take a Linux machine. You can also take a Windows machine. That's not a problem. I would recommend a Linux machine or a, a Ubuntu machine here. The reason being for installing Docker, uh, for getting other uh, other resources, right? It will be easier to work with a Ubuntu machine, and I'm sharing my experience on that. Instead of going for a Docker desktop for Windows, having a, a VM on VM kind of setup, right? That's slightly more complicated. So my recommendation here would be make use of Ubuntu machine. We can log in using Putty or we can log in using SSH key. I leave that decision to y'all. So once you have logged in successfully, you can update your upgrade yourself as super administrator, right? So that it becomes easier for us to write another set of commands that we have. So if you'll see, I have done quite a few changes here. Just give me a moment. Yeah, so I think this should be visible now. So I've made a lot of changes over here. So in terms of if you'll see my files, input hyphen CNF hyphen NFD dot JSON, input hyphen VNF hyphen NFD dot JSON. Right, configuration 
virtual machines or uh, you want to go you want to go for containers or virtual machines i had done both of it specifically from containers point of view you would require deployment.yaml getting help uh, helm charts over here for containers right that's why i said if you are coming from a kubernetes background this will be more helpful for us look at the next step yeah here we need to install docker install helm chart in my case i have done both of it i have installed the docker engine i have installed the helm chart as well so once we are done with this we need to generate the configuration for network function by using input.json specify appropriate details over here just give me a second vi so whatever publisher name one would want resource name network function name what is the container registry that you want to mention over here your blob store image name and where is your template file that you want to mention over here now this is in terms of this is in terms of virtual machine if you are looking for container configuration right so very similar set of details nginx publisher right nginx nsd dot acr download that resource whatever helm packages you would want to mention over here and if there are any specific path mappings that we want to mention we need to provide that details over here right so these are the helm package package details which will be part of input.json or whichever file you would want to create the next resource that we have is the actual helm charts which is your deployment file over here which resources what details you want to mention within this any additional pod properties so you are publishing a function right so what details do you want inside that from a deployment perspective there are any specific members from security point of view cluster ip what is the cpu or memory that you want so what it will do is it will create your create the containers with appropriate values appropriate members here right now the only function that we are hosting over here is nginx demo nginx demo dot full name labels what is the selector resource that one would want and once we are done with this then comes the final deployment dot yaml file so in my case you will see i have created all appropriate files over here Oops. Okay. So this is my YAML file. So depending upon whatever resources I would want to mention over here, volume mounts. depending upon the storage requirements security requirements so all the deployment details will be part of the yaml file over here now one might also see a tar.zz file this is basically a cloud image for the virtual machine based deployment 
OK, so once we have these prerequisites being created. The next step over here would be generating the configuration file. Right. So once your network service network function definition is done, which is the container nginx image here, then go for NSD network service design and finally your configuration file. This is CGV. Generate configuration. So here we need to mention all the details together. Your ACR information. Where is the TZZ file? So I have also downloaded this as part of my Helm package earlier. So if you see the steps on the left hand side, publish network function definition. Design a network service design. Step number two. Step number three will be your creation of the operator. CNF file. Create the operator and the CNF file over here. If you see the deployment option, AZ AKS create. So if you have your on time environment, then go for Azure Arc. Azure Arc is not a compulsion. The important aspect over here is publishing or running these services within AKS. Right, so three important steps here. One is network function design, uh, network function definition, network service design, and then finally doing the configuration over here. The next step over here would be creation of a site. So once you're done with this member, we can go ahead, create a site over here. Select your resource group. Let's mention the name here. Instance name. The site is the location of network site network service. It could be a Azure Arc connected Kubernetes cluster. Add a network function over here. So once we have got the function created, we'll be able to see it over here. So it could be your Azure Arc Kubernetes. It could be Azure Core. Or it could be part of your operator Nexus. Right, so in the in the real world scenario, they should actually be a operator nex nexus, and we should be able to see the published service over here. Whatever name you want to give over here, and we can have multiple functions being created, and all these functions will be part of the uh, definition details and other information that we have shared earlier. Now one of the primary steps that one is to do over here is we need to make sure we have registered our subscription for operator services. Right, that will be the prerequisite here. If we have not done it, it will show an error over here. Saying that some of the steps in terms of onboarding has not been done correctly or not being created successfully. OK, it's not giving the exact message here, but if you try the same thing. From the on prem environment, you can see the actual error there. So if you try publishing it. NSD publish.
right? So this is the error it, error it gives. Your Azure subscription has not been fully onboarded to AOSM. So we'll have to register ourselves, register our subscription for the telecommunication services, right? And this is a, a program by Microsoft. So once we have done that, once we have done the onboarding, and if you recall, this was the first step in the entire process. So if you go to the prerequisites, this is the first step. So we'll have to use our partner registration form to register ourselves for these services. And once we have done this registration, it will automatically do the required mapping for us. Okay. And like I said, there are two approaches over here. So one approach is using the Kubernetes environment. Right? That's one option. Second option is using a network, uh, using a virtualized network function. Now in case of virtualized machine, the difference over here is you will not have to uh, mention the Helm charts. You don't have to mention the Helm charts. Instead, you will have to get your machine here. So if you see this. Cloud images Ubuntu, it is downloading the machine rather than downloading an NGINX image. It is downloading the complete machine. Machine uh, image. And using the ARM template, we are creating the complete machine over here. So in this environment, what one would need to do is we need to take a uh, take the base VM, say uh, four core eight GB RAM, uh, four core 16 GB kind of RAM, right? So that you have a nested virtualization allowed. I'll again, take a V3 machine so that we it so that it supports nested virtualization, right? So we are creating a machine on a machine. So once that is being done, go ahead, create your network function. Input VNF hyphen NFD. So once the function definition is done, we can go for the network service design. We can go for network service design. So here in my case, it was failing from perspective of onboarding of the Azure subscription. So I'll see the same messages here. Your subscription has not been fully onboarded. So step number one, like I said earlier, we'll have to first associate our subscription by filling up the form, filling up the details. And once that part is being done, we'll be able to get these resources mapped. Uh, for a lot of these preview features, Microsoft also provides a free credits so we can leverage on that as well. We can use those resources. So once you have done this onboarding, all the all the relevant steps have been given here. Again, if you are coming from AKS background, you'll know about Helm charts. How do you work with that? What changes one needs to make? Go for the containerized network function, the first one. Or else, if you are coming from a virtual machine background, you know how to handle multiple virtual machines. Go for the second one. And once you're done, you can go ahead, create a site, and it should be available in the drop down there. Create a site network service. And we should be able to consume these services through our application, right? Through our client side application.
Okay, so I've already mentioned about the details over here. By using this resources, you also have CI CD components available with your DevOps resources. So you don't have uh, so initially once you have set up this environment manually. Next time onwards, any new updates, any new features, just go and write these things within your CI CD pipeline. Associate that with your Kubernetes, update the Kubernetes environment, right? Uh, sorry, update the image, associate that with your Kubernetes environment, redeploy, and your job becomes easier. So this is all about a quick look in terms of operator service manager. Anyone, any questions? Thank you very much everyone. Please make sure you are filling the feedback form. Uh, thank you, sir, for this wonderful session. Guys, I already shared feedback form. Please, before leaving the session, uh, make sure you fill this feedback form. Uh, thank you all the participants to join with us.